Now, first of all, let me now answer the three questions that I mentioned earlier. First, what are China's goals and aspirations as it emerges as number one? And here, the most obvious point that I need to make and emphasize at the outset is that even though China, as you know, is still run by the Chinese Communist Party, I can assure you one thing, the Chinese leaders, unlike Stalin or Lenin or Khrushchev, have no desire to prove the superiority of the communist system. In fact, as you know, Khrushchev famously said in November 18, 1956, whether you like it or not, history is on our side, we will bury you. Now, the Chinese don't have the kind of aspirations that the Russians had to in any way prove the superiority of the communist ideology. So if it's not communism, that they're trying to promote, what is it they're trying to promote? And the simple answer is that they would just like to revive Chinese civilization. Indeed, if there's one thing that motivates the Chinese leaders, it is their memory of the many humiliations that China has suffered for over a century, as you know, from 1842, the Opium War, to roughly uh, 1949, or you can even go beyond that. And the one thing that drives the Chinese is a simple credo which says, no more humiliation for China. That's the great motivation. And indeed, Xi Jinping, when he spoke to UNESCO, in March 2014, this is what he said are the goals of the Chinese people. He said the Chinese people are striving to fulfill the Chinese dream of the great renewal of the Chinese nation. The Chinese dream is about the prosperity of the country, the rejuvenation of the nation, and the happiness of the people. It reflects both the ideal of the Chinese people today and our time-honored tradition to seek constant progress. The Chinese dream will be realized through balanced development and mutual reinforcement of material and cultural progress. Without the continuation and development of civilization, or the promotion and prosperity of culture, the Chinese dream will not come true." Unquote. And I think in, that, in those few sentences, he brilliantly captured what is the heart of the aspirations of the Chinese people, to move away from an era of having been humiliated for a long time to an era where they once again feel proud about Chinese civilization and what it can accomplish. And indeed, if the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, could change its name to CCP, the Chinese Civilization Party, then I think it would be a more accurate description of the goals and aspirations uh, of the CCP. But of course, while this may be the motivations, many in the West continue to believe that China's approach is flawed because it is not changing its political system. And you know, you can read in, you know, whatever, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, The Economist, there's this constant belief that the best thing that can happen to China is to have a collapse of the Chinese Communist Party and have a democratic system. The one slightly provocative point I'm going to make here is be careful what you wish for. Because if the Chinese political system becomes more democratic, it could very well become far more nationalist and far more aggressive as a power. And the 
great paradox here is that the Chinese Communist Party is actually delivering a global public good by restraining Chinese nationalism. And if you didn't have a strong Chinese Communist Party in charge, you might actually get a more nationalist, a more assertive China. So I believe that it's actually in global interests to allow the Chinese Communist Party to evolve and change in its own way. And that way, I think we will have a China that focuses on economic growth and focuses on strengthening its civilization.